Hello, and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blogcast. I'm calling this a bonus episode because it's it's uh, it's just a sneaky way to sneak in advertising for my my other podcast, my new podcast, which I have played for you at the end of a previous episode. But just in case you're you know scrolling through and uh, and you know you don't hear all the episodes, that's certainly how I interact with a lot of podcasts. I don't hear absolutely everything. Um, so I thought I should just make this um, kind of announcement, a separate little uh, podcast, separate separate little bonus episode. So um, I haven't numbered this because it is really just um, letting you know about my new podcast. Uh, I did write it as a blog, so I will read that to you now. It is called Announcing My New Podcast, you know, for kids. Introducing Reading the Library Book, a podcast in which I read my novel for young people, one chapter at a time. Part audiobook and part writing workshop, the podcast invites young people to be a part of the writing and editing process of novel writing. I wanted to find a way to get feedback from young people about my novel. As a playwright, I am accustomed to being able to watch and sense my audience. This helps me work out what bits are really working and which might be expendable. Due to a novel's length, it is very tricky to utilize similar barometers for this project. I can only read so much aloud at a time and to so many people at once. The podcast will allow me to share my work in progress with friends around the world and to, hopefully, receive some thoughts about what young people are responding to when they listen to it. The podcast will also serve as a commitment device for me. The trickiest part of this novel writing process has been finding the time and the will to do the major editing. If I have a group of young people waiting for me to read them another chapter, I cannot drag my feet. This process blends a few separate strands of my creative life and practice. While this is my first novel, I'm finding many parts of my identity weaving together in this new venture. Certainly, my experience of podcasting and blogging helps support the speedy launch of this new one, and my experience as an arts educator gives me some ways to set up an open, supportive space in a new venue. My theater practice has given me many ways to listen to feedback and ways to be specific about asking for it, and I even made myself a quick theme song for the whole affair. If you know a young person who likes books, please share this with them. I'm not entirely sure of the age range yet. That's part of the reason I'm doing the podcast. I want to find out. I imagine it's somewhere in the 8 to 11 range. But my first listener was 6. So basically, if you're reading Harry Potter or The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland, you should be fine. It's not nearly as scary as those books either. Thank you. So at the end of the blog, I, uh, I put a, a little plot summary, which I am not going to do right here right now, because what I'm going to do is play the trailer for you here at the end of this blog cast. Um, so, and that's included in the trailer. So you'll hear that if you would like to. Also, um, the title of this blog cast is a reference to a movie called The Hudsucker Proxy. Um, if you haven't seen it, Please enjoy it. If you have not yet seen it, it is a delight. Um, And the blog also features a GIF from it that I made myself. I learned how to make GIFs, and I have used it to make GIFs of the Hudsucker Proxy, uh, Slings and Arrows television show, and um, my own plays. Pretty much. That's pretty much what I've done with it. So, (laughs) super geeky. Uh, anyway, so here the trailer is, um, and uh, I think that's all I need to tell you. Um, please do check out the other the other podcast. Um, yeah, could would love you know any and all young people to give me their thoughts. Um, you know, older people are also welcome to listen, of course. Um, but I mostly care what young people think. <laughs> <laughs> but please listen if it's if it floats your boat I would love to have as many ears on it as possible so listen listen share enjoy etc reading the library book on all platforms where you get your podcasts and here's the trailer why was the library empty at two o'clock 
That sentence was written by the very first listener of the library book. And it is a perfect teaser to what's in store. In this podcast, I'll share with you one chapter of the library book every week. And as you listen, I'd like to hear what you think, what your questions are. When listening to the library book, you can be a part of the writing process. This is the story. If this book existed in print, this is what would be written on the back. Leandra spends most of her time in her local library. When the library's books and librarians vanish, Leandra sets off on a quest to find them. Following a mysterious trail of red leaves through a leaf pile, she discovers Akita, the fantastical global library where libraries come in all shapes and sizes. With her new friend, Eamon, the wandering librarian, and his library, a camel, Leandra investigates the disturbing trend of all kinds of books and libraries disappearing. Are those her books paved into the ballroom floor? And what are those strange books wrapped in burlap and twine that seem to send people to inhospitable places as soon as they open them? Who is behind the cryptic messages and illustrations that keep appearing in her library book? Is it the chair? Or reclusive author, Dorothea Crane? The fate of all of them rests in one young girl's book-loving hands.